This is Tech Pulse, the show that keeps you in step with the technological world. Oh, yeah, back in the box. That uh, causes problems. Oh, Kickstarter, Windows 8.1 preview now available to download for free. And Windows Phone stores hit 160,000 apps. All this and more coming up today on Tech Pulse. Right, this is Tech Pulse for June 20, uh, what is it, 28, 2013. Yes, time is going by quickly, and of course, you know, this is the show where you get all of your, um, all of your news and reviews of everything, starting with the uh, top stories of uh, the day. So we're going to start talking about uh, the Oh Yeah um, project that um, seems to be uh, causing some backlash with Kickstarter. Now, you know, th you know here on Tech Pulse, we are we're an advocate of Kickstarter, we like Kickstarter, but the Oh Year project, <coughs> as you know, there has um, some of the uh, original backers of the product haven't received their systems yet, and Oh Year is already out on the market. It sold out when it came out on Tuesday, and um, a lot of people who, uh, uh, back the system originally have yet to receive their system. Now we read a report here where the the um, CEO uh, uh, told the people that um, she apologized and she she uh, realized that she didn't ship out um, all of the units like she told them she was going to and asked them to be patient and so forth. But that has caused a backlash in terms of it brought up the age old debate when it comes to Kickstarter about um, there not being any regulations on Kickstarter uh, dealing with these uh, companies that either delay their uh, project or um, uh, they don't fulfill it in the manner that they said. Now, according to a report by CNN Money, they said that 84% of uh, Kickstarter's top projects um, ship late. You know, and uh, according to when you read the, the Kickstarter terms of agreement, there are no penalties for companies who ship their products late or don't deliver at all. And this latest oh year debacle has <coughs> <coughs> sorry has caused many people to uh to say that um you know why doesn't Kickstarter have more regulations in place? Now if you read the CNN report it said that um people who pledged um cash for the crowdfunding pro for a crowdfunding project and crowdfunding just simply is a word for um, what Kickstarter is. It gets the crowd or people involved and you fund a particular project. They're saying that um, the top 50 most funded projects on Kickstarter, uh, they found that 84% of them missed their target delivery dates. Now, they're saying that, um, um, it, you know, when you sign up for Kickstarter, you know, it, it sounds, everything sounds good and you sign to, to um, 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 help out a project everything sounds good and they did a they did a survey and they said a small amount of individual um, backed backers chipped in um, can add up fast they're saying that 50 Kickstarter projects CN money CN CNN money examined collectively just you know the 50 top ones raised 40.3 million dollars for more than 413 thousand people and they're saying that they raised money though um, the raise money is only half the battle. The most successful crowdfunders convince thousands of supporters to buy into their vision. If it fails to become a reality, at least in the time frame backers expect, things can get ugly. Now, CNN Money contacted the creators of the 50 highest funded Kickstarter campaigns with estimated delivery dates of November 2012 or earlier to determine their shipping status, and they found that only 8 out of those 50 projects had hit their deadline. So that's not a, a good percentage. Now they said 15 of the 50 projects haven't shipped yet and among of the 27 projects that shipped but went out late, the median delay was two months, although some outlookers took much longer. Now the most delayed project in, uh, in their data test, a data set, a home expresso machine being developed by ZPM Expresso is nine months overdue and doesn't expect to ship until um, sometime this summer. So uh, that's the uh, part of the report coming out at, at CNN. And then there are a lot of people that 
hear these reports and this latest oh yeah um, um, mishap where um, regular consumers, someone who heard about the system uh, two days ago, you know, have an OES system in their house and a backer, an early adopter, you know, who has pledged money for this system to come out, to become a reality, some of them haven't received their systems yet and they're saying, man, that's just not fair. You know, and it's raised the debate of saying, why doesn't Kickstarter have penalties in place or things in place for um, companies that either miss their deadline or don't um, don't come out altogether. Now, here's my 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 take on on this uh, so far, and that is that I think people have to understand because you know here on Tech Post we talk about Kickstarter all the time. We talk about Kickstarter all the time. Kickstarter is not a uh, new thing to us. But here's here's my my point with it. And I mean, as a matter of fact, before I even um, well, no, I'll give my point and then I'll, I'll bring it up into a question to, you know, our resident um, expert, Devin here, who knows all about investments and so forth. But my thing is, if somebody, because if you go to the Kickstarter Terms of Service, they leave the onus on the uh, investor, on the person looking to invest, to check out the company, to check out their background and everything to see if it's a company you want to invest. Kickstarter is a platform that allows anyone who has an idea, gives them a space, gives them a voice to let other people know, well, this is what we're doing. And because there are some projects that big manufacturers, big companies just won't take on because they don't see the, um, they don't see the, the, the worth in it, or they might just buy it out and then bury it or use the technology themselves. So a lot of startup companies have trouble getting funding. You know, a lot of banks today, you know, it's hard to just get a loan if your business model, they don't see it as sound or they don't see it as returning an investment. They're not just going to say, okay, here, here's 50,000, here's 2 million, here's 10 million. They're not just going to hand out money like that. So Kickstarter was created so that people can get their idea out there to the public. And if the public so chooses, they can get behind a concept and they can help to bring it to reality. Now, what they're saying that this 84% um, of people who join or who um, uh, join Kickstarter their projects, you know, are either shipped late or or they don't ship at all and stuff like that. And people say, well, why don't Kickstarter? Why doesn't Kickstarter have regulations in place? And my response to that is that Kickstarter is a platform, a platform that allows people like me, people like you, who might have an idea, to say, you know what? I have an idea, I have a concept, you know, but I don't have the funding, I can't get the funding. Let me go out to the public and tell them my concept, and if they choose, they can invest in, the, in, in my concept, and then here's the thing that I will give them if this thing comes to fruition and stuff like that. Like with any investment, you know, there's risks involved. And so when I invest on a Kickstarter project, I know already that this thing may not come to fruition because there's lots of reasons why something doesn't um, pan out. It's not just that and people are saying, well, you know, Kickstarter, you know, people are stealing the money and, and things like that. And, and I, I'm, maybe there's a few people that do, but I think the basic principle behind Kickstarter is not about people stealing money because there's a lot of reasons why a project may not see the light of day. You know, I mean, sometimes it's a good concept, but when you get into it, you, you discover, you know, m uh, much more developmental problems than you thought. Sometimes uh, the concept doesn't work out as you expect. Sometimes you run out of funding and no one else is willing to, to add any more funding to what you have. There's a lots of reasons why something will fail. It doesn't mean that because it failed that the person is a thief. It doesn't mean that. It just means that there are lots of reasons why things fail. Now, the reason why I want to bring Devin in on this, because this is a story that people, this has been something that's always been happening with Kickstarter, you know, in terms of people have always had their reservations about it and stuff like that. And uh, uh, people have been burned on Kickstarter before. There have been lots of projects where people invest and it hasn't come out or it's delayed or whatnot. So this is nothing new, but this latest Oh Yeah, because Oh Yeah is one of the more popular Kickstarter projects to come out. It got a lot of press. And the fact that their backers haven't received has churned up this debate once again about uh, whether Kickstarter is really a legit, is it a scam, and stuff like that. So I, I, I wanted to pose this uh, question here to Devin, who has been in investment banking for, you know, say decades. So, you know, Devin knows what he's talking about when it comes to investments. Now, Devin, if you were um, uh, instructing me, that I have two two-part questions. My first question is, 
if you were in the, giving me advice on making an investment, you know, not, you're not my investment broker. You're just, you know, we're friends and I'm saying, hey, Devin, um, what do you think? You know, how would you direct me in terms of um, um, finding out about a company or whatnot? I mean, uh, if you're to give me advice, is it my responsibility to check on the company that I want to invest in? Or because the company is out there, they're supposed to be legitimate, so, you know, I don't have any work to do. Uh, I guess all of the above, because you cannot depend, even if a company tells you you're going to be, you know, straight up with right. you. It's your responsibility to do as much due diligence as you can. Right. I mean, it just makes sense. if you, It's your money, right. your risk. So you should do the work to make sure, not guarantee, because right. there's no guarantee. In investment. In investment. So that's the first you know, thing people yeah. have to understand, that return, any investment. Yeah. Return on risk is really what investment is, the potential, you know, to invest with a return based on a certain amount of risk. Right. The lower the return, the lower the risk. Right. And um, so you n need to know. The second thing is very important, not that just due diligence. The second thing is that you need to make sure you invest with disposable income. And what, what, what's disposable income for people that don't understand that term? Income that is typically not required by you to live past your six or seven month or, I mean, or right, one right. year requirement in terms of uh, subsistence right so you so you should wrong, have I lose my job you should have at least six months put away right. so you could live right not too many people have that so right. if you don't have that you shouldn't be investing okay so in a high-risk situation in a high-risk situation so now when we talk about our Kickstarter here where Kickstarter is a platform where they just allow you to have a voice and so forth. Now, I'm not saying Kickstarter can't have regulations and so forth, but my understanding is that when I'm investing in Kickstarter, I already know that it doesn't matter whether this company is Microsoft or whether they're a startup person down the street. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. So you have to take that into consideration when you're going to invest. And my, my philosophy is if I'm investing in something, I have to prepare for the possibility that this money is not coming back. Yeah. That has to be my thought. And if it comes back, great. Yeah. You know, but if it doesn't, I'm not looking to Kickstarter to say, well, it's your fault. When they didn't force me to invest, they said, look, here's a guy with an idea. He wants your money. It's up to you to decide what you want to do with it. That's how I look at Kickstarter. I don't look at Kickstarter as um, a platform where... They must regulate everybody and, and stuff like that. I look at, at Kickstarter as a platform. It gives people an audience that otherwise wouldn't have one, a place to reach much more people than me sitting in my house. Maybe I can't reach people in Canada. I can't reach people you know, across the world. But on Kickstarter, because it's such a, a widely known platform, I get on there and people all over the world can now know about me. So that's what they bring to the table. So it's yeah, on me. Not only, not only do they bring a wider market in terms of more people, but they reduce the risk per individual. Per individual. Yeah, exactly. so instead of you putting, if they're looking for a million dollars, you don't have to put up the million dollars. You could, you know, they, they, are, they are hopeful that more people will put up a thousand dollars or something. Exactly. Right. You know, if a hundred put, people put up a thousand, you know, they're well on their way to, to the middle. Getting their goal. Yeah, so the idea is to spread the, 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 the risk around. All right, so we're up against a break, and we're going to continue talking about this right as you come. I mean, what do you think? Do you think Kickstarter is a scam? I mean, what's your thought on this? We're going to talk more about that uh, coming up right after the break here on the one and only show designed to give you all the news and reviews on Tech Pulse. So uh, just stay tuned right there.